Okay, so I'd like to start by saying that I already talked about a system freeze and all the limitations of the current implementation, something like two years ago in this conference. And after that conference, I implemented all the stuff that we discussed here. I wrote patches, sent patches to FSDevel, and they were ignored. And after that, I tried to use, we tried to use FS Freeze in production in our public cloud, an entity. I fixed those issues too. I sent patches again, they were ignored again. And well, after a few tries, <laughs> I finally got some reviewed bytes and act bytes by several maintainers. So hopefully, by the end of the year, some of the patches will make it into Albedo tree. I will assume that some of you are not familiar with FS3, so I will start by giving a, a brief uh, introduction to, to it. So first and freeze is a feature that allows you to create snapshots and backups that are consistent at the file system level. Well, that means that you can actually mount, I mean, your backups, which is, you know, nice, a nice thing to be able to do. And how does it work? Well, essentially, um, first of all, it writes back all the dirty pages in memory to disk, and after that, it suspends all new writes to the file system. In, in, Linux, in, in Linux, we have two different <coughs> APIs, one which is a block device level API, and another one which is file system or super block level API. But only the file system, sorry, the super block level API is accessible from user space. And this API is a pair of IOCTLs, which take off as one of its arguments, a file descriptor that refers to an open file in the target file system. This is a really important point, so remember this. And I will skip all the details about the implementation and move on to the virtualization use case. File system freeze is really cool and you want to implement live snapshots. By live snapshots, I, I mean, snapshots that are taken while a virtual machine is running. So you don't need to stop all the vCPUs. I mean, these days you can implement live snapshots using libbird, KMU, and the KMU gaze agent. And it works as follows. Um, first of all, libbird, I mean, would ask uh, the guest agent, which is running inside your guest, to freeze all the file systems inside the, inside the guest. And after doing that, uh, libbird using a QMP command and would put the storage driver backend in a QS state. Then we would actually create a snapshot, which is a, a storage backend, uh, well, dependent operation. And then if you're using, for example, KMU, you would update the virtual disk image and finally, you would unfreeze uh, the guest's file systems. Of course, the first operation and the final one require cooperation from, from the guest. Everything, I mean, this looks quite easy, but when you actually try to use it, uh, you run into several funny issues that I will talk about now without going into much detail. So one of the problems that we have with the current API is that it's possible to unmount a frozen file system. This means that, for example, the guest agent, uh, when asked by the hypervisor, uh, will you know, freeze all the file systems for you. But then the, the guest administrator, which doesn't know about, about the hypervisor or even the guest agent, can you know end up unmounting that file system? But if you do that, 
the guest agent cannot unfreeze the file system anymore. Because as I mentioned before, to unfreeze the file system, you need a file descriptor that refers to an open file in the target file system. But the file system was unmounted, so it's not in your namespace anymore. It's, it's not in your mount namespace anymore. So you, you cannot get a file, handle, uh, a file handler for that file system. So this is a, an actual problem that we, I mean, that one of our customers had in, you know, in our public cloud. <laughs> and what we had to do is detect such cases in the, in the, in the guest agent and also on the, you know, Libbert side of things. And when we found, I mean, such kind of situations in some cases, we would need to mount the file system again so that we would be able to actually unfreeze it. But the thing is that if you do that, if you mount a frozen file system, during the mount process, you would do some writes to the file system. But you are supposed to, you know, keep the guest from doing new writes if this first thing is frozen, you know? So there's no, with the, uh, with the current implementation, there's no way to do things properly. So what I did is uh, write some patches that will, you know, unfreeze the file system automatically for you when Um, so why can't the guest agent um, keep the file descriptor open until it's time to unfreeze? Why is it necessary to reopen the file in order to do the unfreeze? How do you mean keep the file? So when you, f when you freeze the file system... Yeah, if you keep the, if you keep the file descriptor open... Then, then yeah. yeah, and then, it, the file, then the file system couldn't be unmounted I either. So the question is why does the guest agent need to close after freeze, and then reopen on thaw. Why can't it leave it open across? Yeah, I think that, that's a possible approach. But, that, that, but, but, but OK, now, I remember the problem. OK, the thing is that in some cases, the guest agent would die. You, you, cannot rely, you, can't, you cannot rely on the guest agent to stay around. You cannot, exactly, you cannot rely on the guest agent to be around all the time could be killed or who knows, you know? So uh, there's a way to address that issue, the issue that the guest agent dies, but I will talk about that later. So with the current API, there's no good solution for this problem. The best thing we could do is unfreeze the file system automatically when at, at you mount time, at unmount time. This is not clean, but it kind of fixes the current implementation. Another problem is that we don't have a check API. So let's assume that the guest agent froze the file system, but then the guest agent dies. And in some cases, you may, you may try to you know, restart the agent, but the, the agent will not know whether the first thing is actually frozen or not. You could make the guest agent stateful and, and try to keep track of things. But I think that's not a, you know, a clean approach. So what I did is, uh, is adding two new interfaces. And I use CTL to check the the first time freeze the state, and also, also added um, a, freeze, a freeze count, which is exported through the procfs mount info file. This kind of works, but it's crazy. You can use this IOCTL or that file to check the state of the file system, but after doing this call, someone may have you know frozen the file system again or. I'm frozen it, you just don't know. It's crazy. 
it's it's even worse because you don't know um, whether it's still supposed to be frozen, right? Exactly. You, you have you have like a period of time where you want to have a file system frozen. Your daemon dies in between. Um, what do you do when you come back up? You don't know whether you should still be frozen or you may unfreeze it. And the same thing happens for the unmount too. Yeah. So if you're unmounted and remount it again, and you actually wanted to have that file system be frozen in that like beyond the time frame when you remounted it, um, that's even like just. Um, unfreezing it on unbound will actually be racy and will break yeah. your file system. I agree. It's a broken. So what I, first what I try to do is fix uh, you know the current API. And then I proposed a completely new API. Now I'm talking about a, a way to fix what we have these days. You know, it's part of the Linux API, we cannot get rid of it and I'm trying to make it as good as possible. Okay, another funny <laughs> thing that happened in one of our customers' guests was that they were using the Linux kernel hang task uh, watchdog, and they were also setting, uh, let me, setting the hang task panic uh, nod to one, which means that if the guest dies after freezing the file system, the kernel will panic. Because the kernel will assume that, that the tasks that were waiting for the file system to be unfrozen are actually hung, not waiting for you know, a valid event. The kernel will assume that whole bunch of tasks are, you know, stuck, hung, and decide that the kernel should panic. And well, your customers are not likely to like this, you know? And this actually happened several times. And I also fixed this, I mean, this problem in a way that whenever we put a task to sleep, when they try to do a write against a first thing that is frozen, we mark that task with a flag, which, is, which I called PFFS frozen. So the hang task watchdog will check whether this flag is set, up, set or not, you know, to decide what to do. I think this makes a lot of sense, but some of the <laughs> XFS maintainers didn't like it for some reason. Don't ask me why, and, but well, so that's why I want you to, I mean, participate on FSDevel and, you know, and try to convince, I mean, all the maintainers that this kind of thing makes sense. I mean, you can end up with, I mean, hundreds of guests that are, you know, <laughs> dead. And this actually happened in production. Mm -hmm. So the hung task timeout is configurable, I believe. So could we, um, in the guest agent, essentially just bump the, the timeout for hung tasks while the file systems were frozen and then That's a possible approach. Because I, I can certainly understand the pushback. Um, if a task is, is frozen for a prolonged period of time, even if it's because of FF freeze, it's still hung. So I mean, that's still. The watchdog's doing its job, right? But you could, I mean, let the watchdog know about it, do this, you know, instead of increasing the timeout. Yeah. What happens if the guest dies, or, or, or I, I don't know, maybe. Well, I, I guess it's crazy. Yeah. The, the flip side is, if I'm a, if I'm running my guest in the cloud, and the cloud provider decided to do FS freeze, and I lost, you know, two minutes of, yeah. of I would want to see a hung task, right? Really? Wow. Would you? If my if my virtual hardware stops, you know, if I if I can't do I/O, I want to see a hung task, right? And what happened if the the guest, uh, I mean, administrator said this flag? I, what is the name? Oh, this one, hung task panic. Yeah. Do you mean, didn't want to panic. I mean, but yeah, but this is this is the nature of the beast, right? So. Uh, the, 
if you can't complete an I.O. within a certain period of time, that's what, hung, that's what the watchdog's there for, is to say that there was a problem. So, um, yeah, this is the general problem with watchdogs and virtualization, yeah. is that they're doing their job, but we don't <coughs> want them to. I just wanted to let you know that we are using this in production. Yeah. What do you think? Do we need it? <laughs> you have to be really careful, really. It's if, there, if there's a way to um, make your freeze time so short that you don't actually have to notify or that you don't, don't ever actually end up hanging, then you should be good too. Yeah, ideally. So yeah. could you think of any way to, I don't know, freeze your, well, basically put your guest on completely copy on write as soon as you start the freeze, um, try to keep it running in with completely only memory backed uh, disk I.O. so that it's really fast and then until it, the freeze is done and then continue on and mm -hmm. so you, you're short, you have a really short time where it's hanging. Mm -hmm. for but can you guarantee that? Running. Not always. Can you guarantee that your disk isn't failing? I mean, it's the same thing. And, and trying to be, you know, foolproof. Or trying to be nice to the guests, just that. Uh, if we don't need it, it's okay. I can keep the patches, you know, for me. Okay. Okay, another thing is that you cannot use... Okay, I think we can skip this one. It's not virtualization related, so let's move on. Okay, another <laughs> problem, problem that we had is that one of our customers was using user namespaces inside the guest, and by mistake he put the guest agent inside a non-root user namespace. And the problem with that is that first and freeze is not user namespace aware. So, well, a lot of funny things can happen. <laughs> so these days, I, last week I wrote a prototype to make FS freeze user namespace aware and I will be sending patches in, in a few weeks. So maybe the guest agent should, I mean, we should be careful. I mean, when we are using containers inside the guest, we should be, be careful about where we put the guest agent. We, we should, I think we should put the guest agent all, always in the root namespace. And well, just go ahead. Did that cause all of the different namespaces to freeze too? Sometimes it would fail. It depends. I mean, it's really broken. But in most cases, it would just fail and do nothing. And the case agent would crash and a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> so I think the guest agent should be, you know, user namespace aware. We should, or we should be careful where you know, we, where we run <laughs> our guest agents. Okay, so this is all I did to fix the current API, but uh, as some people I mean, mentioned, mentioned before, even if you do, I mean, this kind of fixes, the API is still broken and racy. So I proposed a new API which should fix all, um, all these issues. The new API is just a new IOCTL, which I call if I get free, free SFD. And when you call this IOCTL, the first thing will get frozen automatically, and it will also return a file descriptor, which as long as you keep it open, the first thing will be kept you know, in a frozen state. And if you want to unfreeze the file system, the only thing that you need to do is to close that file descriptor. The cool thing about this, if you use it from a guest agent, for example, is that if 
someone kills the guest agent by mistake or is killed by the guest kernel, during the close operation, the kernel will close all the open file descriptors for you. Which means that the file stack will be unfrozen automatically. This is not racy and fixes all the issues that I really cared about. I proposed this and some of the maintainers didn't like it because they don't care about virtualization. <laughs> but I do, so I'm willing to maintain, I mean, this budget, budget set just, just you know, for, for us, but I think I mean, everyone would benefit from an API that makes sense. It's not racy, and I think it covers all the cases, all, all, the, all the possible scenarios. And do you think, does it make sense? I made some small improvements, but you can speak, skip the details. So any comments or? Yeah, if any of you, go ahead. What's the pushback on, on this file descriptor Eiffel thing? Sorry? What, what exactly was your pushback on, the, uh, on this new API for getting an FD? When you're doing an FD, they right, said, they, they said that it was overkill. We already have an API, and we should fix the current API. But the current API is not fixable. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's racy, as you mentioned. Well, that, that one is racy for the same thing I was mentioning earlier, where um, your hypervisor still doesn't know that your guest, <coughs> guest agent crashed. So your host would still take a backup of an inconsistent file system. But that's the nature of the thing. I guess right. that's not too bad. I mean, but the, this thing is cool because, I mean, you know, even if the guest agent dies, everything will be okay. The guest will not end up with a frozen file system, you know? From the guest's point of view, everything is fine. From exactly. the hypervisor's point of view, things might get messed up because of your backup is inconsistent. Yeah, it could happen. Yeah. But it definitely does fix all the guest issues. So I, I think this also check API. So, you know, the hypervisor could know about it, can check whether, I mean, what happened, you know. Is the guest agent so terrible that we have to worry about it dying all the time? I mean, are we solving a problem that doesn't exist? I mean, so as opposed to just opening up the file descriptor, leaving it opening, and then closing it, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I know that right now we don't mean we sort of don't do that. But if we did that, doesn't that f solve all the problems, but also uh, not require a new set of interfaces? I mean, yeah, I, I mean, the guest agent stays around. Yeah. So then it's really just a question of whether the guest agent dies, and there's two cases. Either we suck and we introduce the bug and it crashes, <laughs> right? <laughs> hope that's not the case. And two, that the administrator starts randomly killing processes, and if the administrator starts randomly killing processes, they probably have a bigger problem on their hands than just that, so. Um, that actually. Oh, yeah? Yeah, in our public cloud. <laughs> <laughs> it was their fault, but you know, we are the guys that you know are paying for yeah. these trips. And <laughs> so if this overkill, I don't know. Yes, I, I think I think this is a clean API and it's foolproof. That's it. Right. I guess you just should just really show this to the file system guys. I don't know if we have anyone around here who is, but. Um, yeah, this really should go for the file system side rather than here. Mm -hmm. Because I, I think it, it makes sense to have something atomic. Um, if you can show them that the non-atomic version actually is a problem, and I think <coughs> you're right, I think it is. It's not, um, people were not envisioning the use cases you're using yeah. it for, which always, always happens. Um, but they just need to agree on it. Yeah. Yeah, there are. I was saying it was talked about in an earlier session, and we kind of, he's made some updates from <laughs> when we talked about it, and uh, Rick Wheeler said he talked to Al Vero about reconsidering. <laughs> That's it. Any other comment? Okay, so we can move on to the next.